at SD Bullion. Our everyday low prices are already lower than the big boys' so-called flash sales. One of the fastest growing bullion companies in the country, SD Bullion, just claimed a spot on the prestigious Inc. 500. So you have to ask yourself, why haven't you joined over 30,000 new customers who've recently made the switch to SD Bullion for the lowest gold, silver, and platinum bullion prices? To learn more, go to www.sdbullion.com and enjoy the lowest prices in the precious metals industry, period. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with SilverDoctors.com and with us today is Jeff Berwick from The Dollar Vigilante. Jeff, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. All right, so I'd first like to discuss a little bit about something you said in a recent video. You said that the bankers need a reason for the collapse they've engineered. Now, can you explain a little bit why you believe there's a collapse coming and why you think the bankers want to cover their bases and in the end will try to have a, an excuse for why the collapse happened? Well, I think you just go back through history a little bit. Um, every single sort of major collapse has been sort of engineered going back to the Great Depression. Uh, after, of course, 1913, they took the uh, they actually uh, started the Federal Reserve, so it's over 100 years now. And uh, the first major uh, engineered collapse was the Great Depression, 1929. Uh, and essentially, the, the the thing is that they um, these systems, these fiat currency systems, these fractional reserve banking fiat currency, socialist democracy systems uh, cannot last, and they know that. It's actually all engineered. The the people who are really running things know all these things, so they they play these things out. Uh, they they go to the, as far as they can with them, and then they engineer a collapse uh, so that they can essentially gain even more power uh, during the collapse. So. Uh, the first major one in the U.S. was 1929. Uh, they had it again in the 1970s. Uh, it was very close to collapsing in the 1970s, and then they just took the gold backing away from the dollar in 1971 uh, when they were essentially bankrupt yet again. Uh, the whole system was uh, about to collapse, uh, and, and somehow it has managed to stay alive now for over 40 years. Uh, of course, we had in 2000 another uh, fairly major collapse, uh, fairly engineered as well. Uh, they printed a lot of money and then they withdrew the uh, money printing, uh, which is essentially what they do every time. Uh, then 2008, we got very close and actually George Soros said that that was the end of the financial system and all they're doing now essentially is printing money. And we've seen that since 2008. Uh, we've seen the U.S. government now double its national debt in the last eight years, which is absolute insanity. The fact that no one's really talking about this is is uh, absolute insanity. It's, it's, you know, you have these presidential debates and no one's talking about how the debt has doubled in the last eight years. We've had now uh, interest rates at zero percent for about eight years. Um, so they're essentially, they can't actually raise the rates now uh, because of the amount of debt. So the U.S. government now is getting very close to $20 trillion in debt. So if the interest rate went to 10%, which is not a massive amount historically, uh, that would be uh, $2 trillion a year in interest payments alone on the debt, uh, which is almost the entire tax uh, extortion theft revenue base of the U.S. government. So uh, we're getting very close to the end of the system, and they know it. And this has all been engineered. They've talked about it. Uh, people like Rothschild, uh, uh, all these sort of people have talked about how this is essentially the end of the system. We've had the Bank of International Settlements come out now and say that we need a debt jubilee, and this is going to happen. And this has been going on since the Sumerians. Uh, they, they know all this sort of stuff. Um, and so really what they want to do, in my opinion, uh, is to try to uh, give an excuse for this collapse. And so they're trying to do all kinds of war related things right now. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, that could be the excuse. Uh, they're uh, doing all sorts of things to uh, come up with some sort of a reason. So they're, they're now you have Hillary Clinton talking about Russia. Russia's going to, you know, going to destroy this. Uh, China's going to do it. Um, someone, Something's going to happen. It's, it's clear as can be. You just do the math. It's just numbers. Uh, this system cannot survive. So um, it's my opinion that they're going to engineer some sort of a collapse here <clears throat> on purpose, just like they've done throughout history. Even the Rothschilds all the way back to hundreds of years ago have done these sort of things. <clears throat> it's a, a very clear if you look into what's going on. So 
uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what how they do it, what they do. But this is going to be some sort of collapse here. Uh, it's my opinion that what they're going to try to do is bring in a global currency at some point uh, or try to do it. I don't know if they're going to be able to do it. They're actually kind of losing on many fronts. That's the actually kind of good positive uh, part of all of this is because of the Internet, because of things like Bitcoin, uh, they are losing a lot of control. So uh, we'll see what happens. But uh, this is definitely going to be some sort of collapse here. It has to collapse. It's mathematical. It's, it's just baked in the cake. There's no way this can continue. You can't just keep, keep printing money and everything's going to be fine. Uh, and that's what they've been doing for about eight years now. Quantitative easing, one, two, three. Uh, they're talking about another round now. So uh, we'll see what happens. It, it, it'll either be incredibly hyperinflationary collapse or it'll be uh, some sort of other uh, collapse, but it's going to be some sort of collapse and it's going to happen soon and people need to realize that. So can you expand on exactly how the US government is actually preparing for the collapse. You said in a recent video, another recent video is that you said that the US seems to be preparing for something big. Can you expand on that? Yeah, if you just pay attention to what's going on, even just the last few executive orders from Barack Obama, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, who's never had one day of peace his entire presidency, uh, if you look at the last few, they've had succession plans for the U.S. Treasury, so they're planning for a lot of people potentially dying. <laughs> uh, the latest one was uh, preparing for space weather. Like, you can't make this stuff up. They're actually doing this. You can go to the whitehouse.gov website and look up the executive orders, and they're saying, well, there's going to be some sort of solar event or some sort of space weather that's going to knock out uh, the power grid, uh, which is very possible. Um, so, yeah, the, you can just see what's going on. If you're paying attention, everyone's – you can almost sense it. Everyone's getting ready for something. You can just look at Russia, Vladimir Putin. And I think he's generally owned by the same people who own the U.S. government, in my opinion. But they're preparing. <laughs> they're actually having drills for hundreds of millions of people uh, for a nuclear war. Uh, these are things that are not being talked about at all. And that's why no one watches the mainstream media anymore because it's just, it's just propaganda. Everyone's realizing that now. But the thing that pe most people haven't realized is there's a lot of stuff going on uh, that n hardly anyone is talking about. And so it's going to be very interesting. I don't know what's going to happen, but if we get through the next year and nothing major happens, I'll be shocked personally. Now, it's not just the government, you say. It's also the big investors, the big money, are actually betting on a collapse. Is that true? Well, we've seen in the last few months a number of billionaires, uh, George Soros, uh, Drunken Miller, um, numerous others, numerous billionaires. Uh, Jacob Rothschild, has cut, they've all come out and said they're going into gold and they're getting out of the markets, they're getting out of currencies. Uh, it's really interesting because no one seems to really know this. No one seems to notice. No one seems to care. It's not on CNN. It's not on CNBC. And so a lot of people aren't aware of it. But these people are actually telling us what's going on. And they're actually... Uh, putting it out there that this is going there's going to be some sort of massive collapse and so it's it's really interesting because most people just have no idea so you're seeing all these billionaires as i mentioned george soros uh um jim rogers uh a number of others like i mentioned drunken miller uh, many others. They've all Rothschild. That's the biggest one right there. He's potentially a trillionaire. Uh, are all saying that they're, they're getting prepared for something. And so the fact that most people don't know that is very interesting. Uh, most people have been lulled asleep by the mainstream media, or they're just watching their baseball games or their football games. They have no idea. But uh, they've actually been saying what's going on. Even the Bank of International Settlements, the um, IMF. Uh, almost every month warns that we're on the verge of a massive, uh, massive collapse. Uh, you just look at many banks, even HSBC, so many others have come out, uh, even uh, Deutsche Bank, which is already bankrupt. They're warning of a collapse. Everyone's warning, but no one seems to be listening. Now, you've said that this U.S. presidential election really won't make as much of a difference as a lot of people think it will. A lot of people are saying Donald Trump is kind of the savior in all of this, and he could really fix the government. But in the end, you're saying fundamentally he's not going to fix anything. Yeah, this is a uh, typical uh, uh, p politics. Uh, the, it's not an election. It's a selection. <laughs> the actual votes actually don't even count if you look at the Electoral College uh, aspect. And not to mention that, of course, the U.S. was never meant to be a democracy. It was supposed to be a republic. Uh, it's all been skewed by these same people. 
uh, if uh, you, you just look at uh, the past elections, it's always like uh, the same people running. It's always Clinton versus Bush, all these sort of things. So now uh, people have started to realize that. And that's actually a good sign. So people are starting to wake up and they're like, OK, we, we can't have another Clinton or Bush. Uh, that's not going to be good. And so I think what happened is they said, oh, let's put in Trump and make him look like he's anti-establishment. But he's not. He's a billionaire. He's lived off this system his entire life. He, of course, inherited most of his wealth to begin with. Uh, and then he's lived off of this fractional reserve central banking system his whole life. Uh, he, he definitely is not talking about in these debates. He never says we need to close the Federal Reserve. Uh, that's that'd be one big step to actually fixing the issues in the U.S. Uh, he never talks about stopping the wars. He actually says we need to go after ISIS, which, uh, of course, we all know. And that's coming out right now on WikiLeaks that ISIS is the U.S. government. It's run by the U.S. government, it was started by the U.S. government, same as Al Qaeda. Uh, they create their own enemies to create all these wars and spend trillions of dollars. And now the, the Pentagon or a pentagram, as I call it, has come out and said they're missing six trillion dollars now. Uh, just gone trillion not not million million would be pretty big billion to be huge trillion six trillion dollars missing uh and so no one's talking about this stuff so it's it's the same old show but people are waking up so they're like okay we have to put in somebody who looks like he's sort of not part of the establishment and i think that's what they've done with donald trump uh donald trump's not talking about closing the federal reserve he's not talking about stopping the wars uh he's not talking about stopping the drug war which is also a massive a major problem in the u.s with more people in rape camps uh, jails as they call them in the u.s than anywhere else in the world uh uh, right now, uh, millions of people are in there for nonviolent offense, offenses or crimes, as they call them, which is having a plant in your house. That's how crazy the U.S. is. He's not talking about stopping that. And in fact, he's talking about increasing the police state. He wants stop and frisk everywhere. Uh, so I know that a lot of people have this hope. And it's sort of like with Barack Obama. I remember that back in 2008. There was this hope and change idea. I talked about it back then. I said, it's not going to change. It's it's the same people running the show. Basically, Barack Obama is a teleprompter reader. Uh, and that's all it is. And, and so... I actually think Trump might get in at this point. It looks like they, the elites have abandoned Hillary at this point. But we'll see what happens. We're a few days away now. Uh, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. If you have a hope that one guy is going to get into the government and help you and save you, you are deluded. Uh, the only way to, uh, to have hope and change is to get rid of the U.S. federal government completely and all major governments, all big governments. Get governments back down to 50 states in the U.S. to start. Uh, then get it down to every city and then get it down to seven billion governments on Earth. That's the only way that uh, humanity can be saved. Uh, so, so it's kind of sad for me because I'm a very libertarian. I'm an anarcho-capitalist. And I've seen a lot of libertarians uh, support Trump. They actually – they've fallen for it again. It happens all the time. What's that – what is it? The Guess Who, the song? Uh, uh, Welcome to the new boss, same as the old boss. Uh, we won't get fooled again. It happens every time and it's going to happen again here with Trump in my opinion. All right. Well, on your website, you say that basically the slogan on your website, you know, it's dollar vigilante and you say surviving and prospering during and after the dollar collapse. Can you expand a little bit on this and how people can actually survive and prosper during this crisis? Yeah, the dollar vigilante started in uh, 2010 after I realized uh, how the entire financial uh, system worked and the the uh, central banks, essentially. I read the book uh, Creature from Jekyll Island around 2002 after I lost hundreds of millions of dollars during the tech bubble collapse. And uh, I was like, no one knows this stuff. So I started the dollar vigilante and the name actually came from the bond vigilantes, which used to be people like George Soros back in the 70s. Back then, George Soros was kind of a good guy. Uh, he was uh, reigning in the central banks if they were printing too much money or if the governments were going into too much debt. He would actually attack their currencies, which is great. And uh, but what happened was he he made billions of dollars and then that ring of power uh, uh, turned him to the dark side and now he's the bad guy. He actually wants to propagate the system. And he, of course, George Soros is involved in many terrorist activities all around the world, including the Ukraine. Even in the U.S. with Black Lives Matter, uh, they're paying people to uh, to uh, uh, riot, to destroy property, to uh, be very violent. This is what George Soros is doing now. But I got the name uh, from those bond vigilantes. They used to be the good guys, but they're gone now. They're actually the bad guys now. So the, the whole name came from the only way to stop this system is to sell your dollars. Uh, that's the only way. So just like the bond vigilantes used to do in the 1970s. 
was to sell bonds and and to drive down the uh, the price of the bonds to 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 attack the currencies like George Soros is known for uh, breaking the Bank of England. Uh, we need to break every central bank, and the only way to do that is to sell your fiat currencies. And that's why I'm such a huge proponent of gold, silver, Bitcoin, and anything uh, hard assets. Uh, just sell all your fiat currencies. Don't use them. Don't pay taxes. Stop paying. Uh, you're only uh, funding your own slavery at this point. Uh, we need to get rid of these uh, governments and central banks, and that's why I started the Dollar Vigilante. You know, there are a lot of different ways to own gold and silver for preparation for this crisis. In your opinion, what is the best way? You know, there's ETFs, mining stocks, and there's also the physical metal. Um, and you, with the physical metal, you can either own it, you know, hold it in your hand or you can have someone store it for you. So in your opinion, what is the best way for people to prepare for the crisis? Yeah, you bring up a good point about ETFs. Uh, I know a lot of people buy gold ETFs and they think that's going to save them from this collapse that's going to happen. It won't uh, because those are just that's just paper. Uh, even owning physical bullion is actually fairly dangerous still, uh, even at this point. So if you look back at uh, 1933 in the land of the free, they confiscated all of the U.S. Uh, slaves or citizens, as they call them. They confiscated all their gold and even Americans couldn't own own gold until the 1970s. So for 40 years, people couldn't even own gold or silver in the U.S., or gold at least. And um, so it's uh, because gold and silver are physical. And that the one thing that the government has is a uh, uh, a massive amount of violence and guns and uh, and uh, ability to attack people physically. That's why I'm such a big proponent of Bitcoin because they can't stop it and it's actually driving them crazy right now. They're trying to figure out a way to stop it uh, and uh, they can't. And that's why they're actually talking about this internet kill switch now and they're also talking about some sort of solar weather, uh, some sort of EMP attack to shut down the power grid because they're realizing that's the only way they can stop it. Uh, but when it comes to gold and silver, and I'm a huge proponent of owning it, uh, you have to be very careful careful about how you own it. And uh, just having it all, for example, like uh, some people will buy some gold and silver and put it in a bank vault. That's not going to work uh, because when this collapse happens, all the banks are going to close. We've already seen in England, uh, they've confiscated what's in your safety deposit box at a bank. So where do you store it? Well, you store it in your house. Well, someone might be able to steal it at that point. Then we have people, well, buried in your backyard. This is the stage of humanity we're at right now where we have to bury uh, precious metals to keep it away from these governments and central banks. Uh, so, yeah, it is, it's a very uh, tricky situation. It's difficult. Uh, even Richard Russell, who wrote the Dow Theory Letters uh, for, I think, almost 50 years or even more, uh, before he died last year, he said – the person who loses the least in this coming collapse is going to win. So I think we're all going to generally lose. Uh, this is not going to be any sort of a, a fun time, any sort of a, a big win for anybody. But if you can somehow retain some of what you have during this collapse, you'll be ahead of the pack. All right. Well, Jeff Berwick, thank you so much for giving us your time today. Before we let you go, did you want to share any last insights with our viewers and where they can find you? Yeah, you can just find us at dollarvigilante.com if you go there. Uh, I wrote an, I write an article every day. Uh, just put in your email on the front page and we'll send you our articles every day. If you prefer videos, we're on YouTube. Uh, and you just go to dollar, uh, dollar Vigilante on YouTube and you'll find us. We put out a, a video almost every day because I think this is uh, – the, the most dangerous time in human history for capital, in my opinion. Uh, it's also the most exciting time. We're, we're, we're at nearing the end of this entire fake uh, central banking, which is communist. To the, uh, central banking is a tenet of communism, uh, which is absolutely not free market at all. Uh, we're nearing the end of this massive giant government system, these socialism, communism, fascism, which is w essentially what we have in the U.S. and every country around the world today. It's coming close to the end, and it's going to be a very interesting time. So that's why I'm working really hard right now. I'm doing interviews and writing and, and everything because I think we're very close. If, if it doesn't happen in the next year or two, I'll be absolutely shocked. I think there's going to be something major happening very soon, even possibly this year. I think if Trump gets in, uh, they will probably collapse the markets right after the election on purpose, just like they did after Brexit on purpose. Uh, so people need to be paying attention right now. And so that's why I'm putting out a lot of information and uh, trying to just, uh, wake people up before it's too late. Once again, Jeff Berwick from dollarvigilante.com. Thank you so much for your time. My pleasure. pleasure.